Welcome to the Edinburgh Lake Watershed Association's online video series. In this video, we'll take a look at the geologic history and glacial kettle lake origin of Edinburgh Lake. Most people assume that because there is a dam on the outlet of Edinburgh Lake, that it is a man-made lake. Uh, in fact, uh, Edinburgh Lake is a natural lake uh, formed due to glaciation and uh, Edinburgh Lake's over 10,000 years old. The story of Edinburgh Lake uh, begins during a period of time known as the Pleistocene uh, by geologists, uh, but commonly referred to as the Ice Ages. Uh, this map shows the maximum extent of glaciation in North America at the height of the, the last uh, major glacial advance uh, approximately 15,000 years ago. Notice that the location of Edinburgh here is very close to the southern uh, glacial margin. As the glaciers began to retreat north uh, into Canada from the northern part of uh, North America, uh, blocks of ice broke away from uh, the leading edge of the glacier. And these uh, blocks of ice, as they broke away from the glacier, uh, and separate it from the active moving part of the glacier are known as what we call uh, stagnant or dead ice. Try to imagine a block of ice about the size of a professional football stadium and you have a pretty good idea of the, the size of the, the block of dead ice that uh, formed Edinburgh Lake. Once separated from the main glacier, uh, these large blocks of ice sit on the uh, outwash plain, become buried in sediment, and eventually melt, leaving a depression in the outwash plain uh, that as long as the bottom of the depression is low below the regional uh, water table, uh, it fills with water and becomes what is known as a kettle lake. Nettenborough Lake is an example of uh, such a feature. This slide gives you a pretty good idea of what um, the area around Edinburgh might have looked like uh, towards the end of the Pleistocene. Uh, the area north of uh, Edinburgh Lake, uh, we would have had uh, lobes of glacial ice occupying the Shenango and Conneautee Creek valleys. South of the lake, where uh, the Edinburgh University campus is located today, uh, would have been an outwash plain where sediments um, flowing out of the glacier in meltwater streams uh, would have accumulated to uh, considerable depth. Uh, the valley uh, that the Edinburgh University campus sits in uh, has uh, over 500 feet of glacial outwash sediment. Around the edges of the glacier there would have been mounds and terraces of uh, sediment uh, that are known as cames. Uh, the Edinburgh Cemetery, uh, the area uh, around the uh, Edinburgh Mall, and the, uh, the spit or um, peninsula of sediment uh, that sticks out into Edinburgh Lake, uh, known as Green Point, would all be example of came deposits of this type. Scattered around the outwash plain, uh, there would have been a number of these glacial kettle lakes. Uh, the smaller lakes would have very quickly filled in with sediment and disappeared, uh, but the, car the larger kettles like Edinburgh Lake, Lake LaBeouf, and Lake Pleasant uh, still exist today. This is a bathymetric map that shows the current depth of Edinburgh Lake. Uh, you can get a pretty good idea of the original size of the glacial kettle lake by just looking at the um, blue areas uh, that are shaded on the map. Um, the total depth of the lake uh, today is about 30 feet. Um, the, the level of the lake has been raised about 10 feet by the dam. So all the gray areas around that blue area uh, representing the old kettle lake uh, are the areas that have been flooded due to the construction of the dam. If you have any questions about the content of this video or about uh, Edinburgh Lake or the Edinburgh Lake Watershed Association, please contact us at the email shown on the screen.